What you're looking at on your screen is my Linux experiment machine. And the basic rundown of this is that this system has an Asus P8Q77-M motherboard with a Core i5 3570 CPU. It's got 4 gigs of RAM. I think it's an 80. I can't quite read it, but I'm pretty sure that's an 80 gig. Okay, so this portion of the video got messed up either during recording or during playback when I was trying to import it, uh, so there's no audio. What I was talking about is the system is running Ubuntu Mate 20.04. As of the making of this video, 2010 is out, so hopefully we will be upgrading in the process of doing all of these hardware upgrades. Alright, once again, the audio got messed up during this portion, so what I'm showing you right now is the RAM that I'm going to be installing to replace the existing RAM. It is an 8GB kit of ADATA XPG, I believe is what it's called. It's the first time I've ever used it. I've never even heard of it until now. I was intrigued by what it could and could not do. It's DDR3 1600, so it's no worse than what's already in there. But a kit of two memory modules should run a little better than just one, because it should be in dual channel as opposed to single channel. The other thing is going to be one of these 40 gigabyte a Pacer SSDs. But before we get started with that, I want to do some benchmarks of the existing hardware, so I'm going to find the keyboard. Uh, we'll start with the RAM first. We'll just go into Memtest 86 Plus, and hopefully it will give us a performance benchmark, which it will. So you can see for yourself just what kind of bandwidth we're getting. I believe XMP is turned on, but that's about the only thing I've done. I don't do overclocking or anything like that. There is the performance of the RAM. We only have one module installed. Uh, it is already DDR3-1600, so I don't really anticipate too much of an improvement from going to 8 gigs. However, we might get an improvement if it moves from single channel to dual channel memory. I'm not sure what it's running in right now. We'll get out of that, and then we'll try and get some hard drive benchmarks here. Okay, well I can't find a tool that seems to want to measure the disk performance, so whatever. I guess we won't be doing that. So we'll start with the memory upgrade. Pull the plug on the machine. And uh, what we will do, and what I will do, and what you will watch, is I will struggle to get my way in here. I need to remove the optical, or move the optical drive. I don't have to rem remove it. I do need to get that. Out. Okay, we'll pull that out of the way. And now, here comes the fun part. I don't really know how these RAM slots work. I know you can't really see them behind that heat sink, but this is the best that I can do. My assumption is that I should be able to just pull the memory module out, just like that. These are these weird AMD or ASUS slots where one of them is a traditional, you know, proper little tab here and the other one is just some weird thing that they came up with a couple years ago that I don't, I don't understand, so I guess there's one thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put these in. Just like that. And then we can work on getting the drive in. Okay, so you can barely see it there, but I've gone ahead and installed the SSD with one screw, because that's the best that I can do. Now I just got to cable it. Uh, get the hard drive recabled and get everything all rejigged so I can. Uh, I might just take the hard drive right out, in fact. Just pull these out, pull the faceplate off, and uh, pull that hard drive out so it's sitting out in the open and I don't have to deal with this huge, gigantic mess of cabling. 
So here is the system as it is configured now. The hard drive has been removed. The SSD has been installed. Everything is cabled up and we are going to clone from this over to the SSD. Hopefully. I don't know if this is actually going to work. Uh, I'm going to have to resize because we're going from an 80 gigabyte drive to a 40 gigabyte drive. So, in theory, I only have to change the size by about 40 gigabytes in order to clone it successfully. So that should be relatively easy, but I have to change this, the size of the partition. So, I'm not sure if it's going to turn on automatically or not. Looks like the answer to that question is no. Okay, G parted. Go. Hopefully this will actually boot. Because this has not booted on anything else that I've tried it on. So it might take a while. Okay, it looks like it might actually work on this. Now, SDA1, uh, this is the new SSD. I'm going to just delete all this crap. I can get the mouse to move. So we want 37.27 gigabytes. That's what it's got total. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to just apply that. Hopefully it will actually work. So it's completed. Good. Alright. So now we go to SDB. And let's see, it's got a 10 gig boot partition at the beginning for some reason. I don't really know why. So the only thing I should need to do with this... I'm not going to delete it. I want to resize it. Uh, is I need to drop it by 40 gigabytes. So, what is that? 40960? So, 40960. Oh, I can't do that with this. Let's see if that'll actually work. Yes, resize and move. Alright. So there's a 40 gigabyte right there. And then, if this mouse would actually work properly, I could do this. Take this and move it forward. Resize, move. Don't care, go. Go. Apply. I'm not entirely sure why there are three partitions instead of just two. Unless one of them is supposed to be the home partition. Which means the home partition is not going to be smaller than the boot partition, which is funny. But, whatever. Oh, what's it doing? Okay, so the operation has completed. So now this, sh this should clone. There should be no reason why that wouldn't clone. So I'm going to close it. I'm going to exit. Or I'm not going to exit because it's not going to work. I'll hit reboot. now we should be able to boot into Clonezilla. Okay, this is pretty standard stuff. Device to device. Not doing any imaging. I'm going to choose expert mode. And we're doing disk to local disk. Our source is the 80 gigabyte drive that I've just played around with. The destination is the 40 gigabyte flash drive. Now, I'm going to turn on rescue mode because I was having issues with disk check earlier. Uh, that was the tool I was trying to use to, you know, check the speed of the disk and it wasn't working. So I just want to make sure there isn't going to be a problem. So we'll just go ahead with that. I'm not going to bother doing a disk check. I'm going to use the table from the source and we will run it. And it's probably going to get upset with me. Of course I want to continue. Of course I want to continue. Destination disk is too small. So we'll try this the G-parted way. I'm going to copy this. We'll paste it here. 
Yes, that would be nice. I would like it if you would do that. We'll take this, we'll copy it, paste it over here, and then we'll grab, uh, we'll go back to this, we'll grab the swap partition, copy it. There's going to be a little bit of extra space at the end. We'll resize it later. Right now I just want to get this done. We'll apply it, which probably won't work because I know how this goes. Okay, so I've cloned the partitions. That's fine. But now I need to actually get it to boot. So what I've done is I've gone into a Grub2 booting thingy on the UBCD. This is Grub2. And we are going to boot, or try and boot, to the SSD. I've removed the hard drive. I shouldn't even need it anymore. And we'll see what happens. Let's see if it'll actually start. It looks like it did, and it did so very quickly. Holy crap. And so now, here comes the fun part. I don't think it could possibly have been this easy, but all I needed to do was run the grub install and use our device, which there's only one. Then I'm going to just go ahead and unplug that. And uh, we'll try it again. Just to make sure that that's correct, which it is. And uh, we'll reboot, and we'll see if we have a bootloader now. Where we did not before. I just booted to a blinking cursor. That looks a lot better. Okay, so that should be it for the hardware portion of setup. Look at how fast that starts up. That's impressive. How about the software portion? So, here we go. I'm going to go... I'm going to find the software updater. Which, of course, isn't going to work because the network cable is not plugged in because I'm a dork. There might be software updates because I haven't run this machine in a while. Which there are, so we'll go ahead and install those. Alright, so now we got to reboot the machine. Lovely. That shouldn't take too long. Okay, so we'll go back to the software updater. Now, I don't know if it's going to actually find an update. Oh, yay. More updates that it wants to install. So let's see. Will it show us? Ah, yes. Our upgrade. Ubuntu 20.10 is available. I would like to upgrade, please. Okay, upgrade notes. Groovy Gorilla, that's what it's called. Okay, obviously I'm going to read those carefully and just hit the upgrade button, because I want to do this. It's only a test system anyway, so it really doesn't matter that much. From here, I believe, if I remember how this process usually works, for the most part, it's just sitting here and letting it run. But it may take a while. I love how this says upgrading Ubuntu to version 20.04. Somebody didn't do the quality control on that one, I guess. Oh, well, okay, I guess it's not. Do you want to start the upgrade? It can take several hours. Yes, I want to start the upgrade. Please. Then I'm going to shut the camera off and tell it to done. Okay, here we go, done. Gotta find the mouse. There it is. Very easy. Very straightforward. bit slower of a boot process, but that's okay. <clears throat> I'm sure there's a reason for that. Can't imagine there's any updates. Just because it should have installed those. You can see that we indeed have Ubuntu 20.10.
and everything seems to be working just fine. So that's it for this video. Okay, there is one thing that I realized that I forgot to do, and that was to show the RAM speed after the upgrade. So there it is. And imagine that the reason why it's so much higher, I think it was like 10 something before, is because it's running in dual channel mode now as opposed to a single channel. But that's just my guess.